Folks, you know what they say when it comes to breakups. Sometimes the hardest part is learning to let go and move on. The Winnipeg Jets might have to have a little bit of their own breakup with somebody who's not even a member of the team yet. We're going to talk about who this is and why the Jets might genuinely benefit from moving on and uh, starting to explore other options on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. Or Locked On, the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, friends, and welcome to tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. Thank you for choosing to make Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform of choice, including Apple, Spotify, Google, Megaphone, Odyssey, and YouTube. We've got audio and video versions of this podcast available on all your favorite platforms. So uh, give us a follow and a subscription. We really love and appreciate your support. And it'll also keep you keep you up to date on the latest and greatest in Winnipeg Jets news and analysis. Now, on tonight's episode, I thought there were a couple of things that I thought were really worth addressing. Um, One of them is is kind of this feeling I've had with the Jets uh, in terms of the head coaching search. I said, you know, at the start of the intro it might be time for Winnipeg to start moving on. And I think when it comes to the head coaching search, this is a particularly relevant theme. While we're at it, I also thought it would be worth talking about um, some of the, some of the other larger developments around a couple of NHL teams, in particular the Boston Bruins, and why I kind of feel like what they're doing might also be something the Jets need to consider in the, well, maybe next few seasons. It's, it's going to be a painful topic, but you know, Winnipeg at some point is going to have to pull the plug on this current roster and maybe think about a longer term future where, you know, the current core is going to look a lot different. Towards the end of the episode, we'll also talk a little bit about Tampa Bay versus New York, which is currently ongoing. Uh, we have had a, uh, a recent game and I thought I would update the series and tell you a little bit about um, some interesting thoughts that we've seen throughout the entire playoffs with trends that have been continued in this series. Uh some stuff that's a little bit unusual, but uh, starting us off, let's talk about, you know, the, the, the Jets and Barry Trotz and why I feel right now it is actually an okay time to maybe, you know, call it quits on the race for him and maybe start looking at other options. Um, normally, when it comes to head coaches and, and somebody like Trotz, I would have been pounding the table and, and really asking for Winnipeg to aggressively pursue a coach of this quality. But with Trotz, you know, when we, he, he was first unveiled as a potential option and choice number one for the Jets, I, I kind of added some thoughts that I felt he would be a great coach in a lot of areas, but I thought when it came to the Jets roster and how this team should be playing, I wasn't really convinced 100% of the fit. Uh, I, I think the more I've considered it, the more I kind of lean towards this being um, Trotz as a really good option for uh, a veteran coach and maybe one of the safer picks if you're looking for a team that has a more stable defensive backbone. But I think longer term with how Trotz kind of envisions himself integrating with an organization and becoming part of a management team, I don't know if that is really uh, the direction that I want the Jets to go in. I, I think that he would be, you know, longer term, a, a good employee and somebody who would be uh, obviously a very crucial part of Winnipeg's future rebuilding process and potentially a very uh, good acquisition in starting to shape the future of the team. But by the same token, you know, I thought that his idiosyncrasies at his, uh, you know, his last few teams kind of put a little bit of a, a seed of doubt in my mind as to whether he would be the kind of guy who could, who could get the most out of this Jets team. And I, I feel like that's been further reinforced when, you know, we're looking at a guy like Claude Julian, right? Uh, Adam Lauer got called up to Team Canada and started turning back the clock on his career a bit under Julian. And what I think Claude really does, uh, he he understands how to get the most offensive ability out of guys that maybe you traditionally don't see scoring as much. Uh, I, I think 
Lowry becoming a really prominent two-way attacking forward was, you know, a sign that maybe the Jets should favor somebody with more offensive aggression because the Jets obviously are not very good at defending. This has been an issue for years. Um, past couple of seasons, it's really gotten worse. Uh, there's only been a couple of years where the Jets' defense, probably owing more to, to the roster than anything, was like locked down, locked tight. Past several seasons, that's not really been the case. And, you know, you look at the PK, that's super porous. Um, you look at the goaltending, which is is constantly having to carry this team. And I think the, the way to really kind of combat this is to keep the play away from your own end. The Jets' defense is probably not going to be good for a, a while yet, particularly like the actual blue line pairings. I think we have some talented players and guys who could, you know, conceivably uh, step into really prominent roles, but we don't have like an elite franchise number one top pairing defender. Uh, we have a couple of guys who I think are really good as um, what you might consider more complementary players, maybe like a number two defender rather than a clear number one, and a couple of uh, guys who could become really high in second pairing defenders. But again, we lack that foundational Kale McCarr kind of player. And so in, in light of that, I think it's really important for the Jets forwards to then kind of keep the play up the ice and also have the defenders, you know, providing more offensive support, which I, I've, I've yelled about for years. Uh, obviously, it hasn't really changed. But, you know, with the Jets under Julian or a coach like him, uh, Bruce Cassidy being a, a potential other choice here, I think Winnipeg would do better to mitigate some of its issues. Uh, I think Trotz has kind of that conservative defensive streak with how he wants his players to perform, which in some cases, if you had like the Islanders without Barzal, that would make sense. But then you look at what actually happened with Barzal's performance. It's really tailed off. And I don't want to see that happen to guys like Nikolai Ehlers, who are sort of defined by their creativity. Um, so much of what guys like Kyle Connor, Ehlers, Perfetti do, a lot of that is because they're allowed to express their offensive tendencies on the ice. I don't think Trotz would really endorse that as much. Uh, and so I think, you know, if you look at Julian and what he can do, I think Claude or Cassidy, um, maybe even Jim Montgomery, uh, not really into to Scott Arneal or Rick Tockett in that sort of scenario, but maybe like Pascal Vincent. Uh, I think all of these coaches would probably embrace that offensive identity and aggression more so um, than some of the more conservative styles of coaches like Trotz. I think Barry is a really great choice for a lot of teams, but like I said, I, I kind of viewed him as the best of the choices that I considered not as optimal for Winnipeg. And so um, I think the Jets should probably cut their losses and maybe consider another candidate. I like Trotz a lot, but Winnipeg can't really wait for his decision forever. And I don't think that they should have to. I think with Cassidy out, with Julian, a free agent, you know, you have a two pronged, amazing set of options. Uh, plus a couple of other guys who could definitely do a job and maybe even be really good alternatives. So, you know, Winnipeg, I know that, you know, this this relationship did seem like it was starting to come to fruition, but even Elliot Friedman was saying Winnipeg was starting to have second thoughts about making Trotz their number one. And I feel like if Trotz is not making Winnipeg his number one, you know, don't don't try and force a relationship that doesn't have to be uh, the best outcome or best route. Instead of trying to make something materialize, Maybe look at some other really good choices because I feel like, you know, Winnipeg is optimistic and reactive. And when they do that, sometimes better options land in their lap. And I think right now with Cassidy and Julian out there, this is the exact scenario Winnipeg can take advantage of. So I'd be curious to know if you agree here. Do you feel you still want trots over everyone else? Or are you starting to rethink this plan and think maybe Winnipeg should take a look more at some of these other candidates instead? Let me know at my social medias on Twitter or in the YouTube comments below. Now, speaking of uh, transitions and stuff around the league and, and coaches moving around, I thought I would talk about one major topic um, concerning a team that actually just that just let Bruce Cassidy go because I feel like what's happening with Boston might be coming uh, to the Jets a lot sooner than any of us want to admit. But before we talk about that elephant in the room, I do want to shout out one of our other wonderful sponsors. Our next partner has a product I use literally every day. I started taking AG1 because I was looking to fortify my immune system, especially with COVID and a lot of other viruses running around right now. Uh, you know, everyone's heading outdoors, everyone's getting around. And, you know, this is the kind of time when your immune system is constantly under assault. And so 
AG1 promotes not only a healthy immune system, but it gives you more energy in the day. It gives you tons of vitamins and minerals. And honestly, it's a much cheaper, much healthier alternative to taking tons and tons of pills. If you're wondering what Athletic Greens is offering with AG1, this is a way to have one delicious scoop that gives you 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, uh, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. All you have to do is just mix that scoop in water, and again, you're getting a super blast of all of these really healthy nutrients, and you know there's no GMOs. Uh, you're, you're avoiding artificial chemicals and nasty, gross stuff that your system really doesn't want. It's got only one gram of sugar. And it's keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, and gluten-free friendly. So if you're sensitive to dietary restrictions, Athletic Greens has your back. Again, like I said, it actually saves you a ton of money too because it costs less than $3 a day. And this is like a micro habit. So it's not like you really have to adjust your lifestyle all that much to make AG1 a daily part of your routine. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm yourself with the most convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every single day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked on Winnipeg Jets. Uh, I thought I would spend, you know, this middle portion of the show talking about some developments around the league that I think might honestly be more relevant to the Jets than people realize. Now, before we talk about one petite, one team in particular that, that I think maybe has uh, some worrying signs for the Jets, I did want to ask a favor of all of you listeners. We've recently expanded the Locked On NHL network and, you know, the podcast network in general from all of the Locked On branches has been growing and it's been a really great process. But, you know, during this time of transition, obviously the most important thing is that we're making you listeners happy. So we have a survey to get your feedback where you can tell us what you like, what you don't like, what you think we should change, all that sort of stuff. It's a super quick survey. It will only take you a couple of minutes and you can find it at LockedOnPodcasts.com slash survey. Best of all, though, once you complete it, you will be entered to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. I don't know about you, but I like free stuff, and especially when it comes to concert tickets and maybe even, say, sporting tickets, <clears throat> Winnipeg Jets tickets. Uh, obviously, saving money is really cool. And all you have to do, again, is just enter yourself in the running by doing this quick survey at LockedOnPodcasts.com slash survey. Help, help us help you get to uh, better content, better videos, better podcasts. Again, we really appreciate your feedback and thank you so much for all of the support that you give us. Now, kind of transitioning topics away from the coaching search, uh, I think the Boston Bruins have also been starting to signal that they are in fact talking about a rebuild. Um, And this for me is kind of Winnipeg's inevitable fate. Uh, You know, they're talking about maybe trading um, David Posternock, if he doesn't really seem like he wants to return, it's not clear that he, you know, will refuse to sign there. But I, I would imagine, given where that team is and the fact that they just let Cassidy go, um, it does feel like the NHL, or not the, the NHL, but the, the Bruins themselves are signaling the intent to start moving on and maybe, you know, retooling and rebuilding. And I think that is probably the direction that they've needed to go for a little bit because, you know, the Bruins are old. Uh, and the veterans at this point aren't really doing enough to get through some of the great teams out there like Tampa, um, Colorado, even the Florida Panthers. You've got so many young, great squads in their primes, and the Boston Bruins have long passed that point. They've got some great individual younger players uh, that they can rely on for years to come, like Charlie McAvoy. But, you know, Pasternak is what, like 27, 28? Uh, Bergeron and Marchand are in their 30s. Um it's not a particularly young core. So given that, I think the Bruins kind of represent where the Jets are starting to move towards. Uh, you know, the the myth that the Jets have this really long window of competitiveness for me, uh, if you still hold on to this notion, you really need to kind of drop it because if anything, I think the last few years have shown you it's a really fragile time period. You know, the Jets, I I knew that they were going to take a step back after 2017, 2018, but I didn't think it was going to be this drastic. 
uh, Winnipeg basically just fell off a cliff and they have never really gotten anywhere near towards getting back to that competitive point. So uh, I think this is why the Jets might also consider just starting over again. Um, If the head coaching search doesn't really yield a candidate that makes them immediately competitive, that puts them in a better position to start competing and getting back to the playoffs literally next year, then maybe it's time to start cutting your losses. Hellebuck is almost 30. Shifley is almost 30. Wheeler is really late into his, you know, mid to late thirties. Um, you look at Ehlers, he's what, like 25, 26. Uh, there's, there's not a ton of players that really qualify as young. Josh Morrissey is what, 26, 27. Uh, you know, you've got some guys in the middle of their primes, maybe towards the end of their primes, but in general, this Jets team age kind of caught up quickly. If you think about it, you know, four or five years ago, you're talking about the youngest team in the NHL, one with infinite promise, a foundation of competitiveness and potentially a really great competitive core. And what happened in the intervening time, all of that went to pot. We wasted, you know, three to four years watching this team kind of struggle uphill constantly. And the team never really adjusted course. And so if you feel like playoffs are going to be hard, if you if you can't get Pierre-Luc Dubois to return, if Shifley is starting to indicate that he wants to leave, you know, a rebuild might be the genuine best option. Hire a coach that's maybe young, doesn't quite have NHL experience yet, but brings progressive ideas, is really open to more data-focused and data-centric uh, approaches to analysis and is forward-thinking, and let them take over the reins of a younger team. Let them help shape the future of the squad and start to rebuild. I, I hate to say it, but like you think about it, and I think for me personally, I don't want the Jets to waste the years that these some of these great players have left. You know, Hellebuck deserves to have a chance to make a cup run. Uh, Shifley could probably do with a chance to have that as well. And I feel like for Winnipeg to not really do a lot with this team over the past several years, it squandered so many chances to make this team special. And I look at what's happening with the Oilers, what happens with McDavid, and I'm like, I don't want the Jets to go through the same process. In a way, they kind of already have. But, you know, obviously McDavid is on a level that, unfortunately for Winnipeg, you know, none of our guys are really quite there. But that's not to say that they're not amazing players. It's just McDavid is McDavid. Uh, It sounds like in some ways he might have actually had a hand in his own demise by really trying to shape the roster itself. Um, But, you know, on the whole, you look at how Edmonton has constructed that team, and it's just a disaster. And I feel like if Winnipeg doesn't feel that it can get itself uh, into a competitive state because it will need to trade for players and try and fortify the depth a lot, then start the rebuild process. This is a time where the Jets still can get a ton of value for players like Hellebuck, for guys like Shifley. You know, I think that there is a chance for them to really decide this fork in the road. I'm not really willing or, or I guess, ready to see this team go apart yet. Um, but I am also completely understanding if they do decide this option. Pascal Vincent might be an option there if you wanted to go for a, a familiar face with the organization. You helmed, you know, who helmed the Manitoba Moose squad at one point. Uh, he seems to have a more open-minded approach. Um, same with maybe Dave Morrison uh, or not Mark Morrison. Uh, Mark might be another option here if you want to, again, bring in a coach who's been working with the Moose, who's had a pretty good deal of success. And, you know, while he definitely has some blind spots and issues in his tactical approach, you could still potentially see him gaining experience and starting to develop something longer uh, in the longer term that would fit, fit like a future aggressive, offensively oriented Jets team, because there are some things that Winnipeg is never going to change. This team is not going to magically get faster next year. It's not going to get younger. And I, I, I can't blame the squad if they feel that they're not going to win a cup anytime soon and they want to see greener pastures. I think I, you know, I'm always on the side of the players for the most part. Um, I know I said always for the most part, a little bit contradictory. I just mean within reason, right? Uh, I want them to be able to pursue their career aspirations. And, you know, I I like team loyalty, but I don't think that it's always fair to ask for that. So if the Jets and the players feel like this, this competitive window really isn't going to materialize, then start over. You know, Winnipeg got very far uh, a couple of years ago and fell off. 
it's time to think about draft and develop being your guiding principle again. It's what made this team amazing to begin with. Actually draft and develop for once. We haven't done it in years. The Jets have struggled. And, you know, instead of signing veterans who don't fill a void, who can't bring the same level of quality that developing in-house prospects could, you know, go back to what made you such a strong team and such a fearsome contender to begin with. I'd be curious to know how you feel about this. Maybe you don't agree. Maybe you feel like you want to you want this team to keep giving it shots over the next couple of years. Hang on to these players. Don't trade them and try and make a run while you still can. Or if you do feel that the, the rebuild process is the best way to go, again, let me know at HL Living Loco and LO underscore Winnipeg Jets on Twitter. I'm probably going to put out some polls to see how people feel um, over the next day or so. So be sure to vote on Twitter on those and give me your thoughts. I'll talk about it on Friday's episode um, and kind of get the general pulse on how people feel about this because I feel like this decision point is very critical and it wouldn't shock me if more people have considered the option of a rebuild uh, rather than trying to make the playoffs. But again, let me know how you feel, maybe in the YouTube, YouTube comments below. But uh, before we close out tonight, I did want to transition to one other topic, just talking about some you know NHL Eastern Conference Finals action. It's been a really fun time if you've been watching, uh, like one of those teams I'm talking about that Boston can't get behind um, or get by. It's, it's Tampa Bay, and they have been whew, starting to turn up the heat again. Before we talk about that series, though, I did want to shout out one of our other really awesome partners. Uh, if you've heard me talk about Built Bar before, you know that I am personally a big fan. I've had a lot of protein bars over the years, and I'm going to be honest, a lot of them suck. Built Bar is one of the rare ones that really doesn't suck, and in fact, is actually pretty freaking amazing. I love them because they're more like a candy bar with a 100% chocolate exterior and a soft, chewy interior. They've got tons of great flavors, including a, a more recent one that they brought back called Caramel Brownie. If you know what it's like to dip your finger in cook or uh, uh, brownie batter, imagine that in a protein bar drizzled with caramel and you are just in heaven. As good as it sounds, though, you might imagine that it's sinfully delicious, but you can enjoy all of that without any of the guilt. Uh, you know, caramel brownies got around 140, 150 calories, 7 grams of net carbs slash sugar, and 17 grams of protein. It's packed to the gills with stuff that's good for you, and it also tastes amazing. But if you're not really so sold on caramel brownie and you want to give some of the other Built Bars a, a try and check out their other flavors, be sure to check out the Mix Box, which gives you uh, 12 different flavors if you choose. You can take as many as you want of each flavor to try and get a sampling of what they've got and find your personal favorite. To place your order, go to Built.com and be sure to use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Again, that is promo code LOCKED15 at checkout to get 15% off at Built.com. Hello, friends, and welcome back to these closing thoughts on tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets. Uh, I just wanted to close out with some fun thoughts on the current NHL playoffs. Obviously, this is the last series we have before the Cup Finals, and we're just waiting for either the Rangers or the Lightning to emerge victorious. I think this is a seven-game series. Tampa Bay has now uh, extended their, their run of form to a two-game winning streak at home. And kind of on that note, this year, more than any other season I can remember, it's like playing on home ice has been a totally different experience uh, compared to the road games. Those who have been at home have really dominated a lot of these playoff series, um, which is kind of why I feel like the Rangers have a really great edge here. Uh, you know, obviously they're going to have to go to a game seven if it gets to that point. And the Rangers are the ones at home that own home ice advantage, which is a huge deal. Uh, you've noticed like a really big dichotomy in team performances. You know, they'll have a great two game homestand and then go on the road and look like they have never touched a hockey puck before. I don't think the Rangers have been nearly that bad. Uh, the first game was pretty rough. Second game, I thought that they played OK, but of course, it's just Tampa Bay is very good at capitalizing on mistakes. And, you know, Rangers made more than a handful. So uh, this series is now tied two to two. I could imagine, you know, the, the lightning coming back in a major way, but I still feel like for me, I've got the Rangers coming out either in six or seven. I think New York is uh, a much better team than I was expecting. Not great, but much better. Uh, Shusterkin has kind of covered a lot of the other deficiencies, but like when I watch their power play puck movement, when I see their really good PK, uh, and honestly, the even strength scoring being pretty decent, I just, I feel like this team I don't know. There's something special about him that I, I don't know. It's it's weird. It's kind of like the Caps several years ago where the Caps had like, 
a really rough team compared to what you were used to with some of their best squads. And yet that was the one that ended up winning the cup. The right confluence of uh, factors happened all together at the same time. And they got through and won it all because again, you only need 16 wins to get a cup, uh, a Stanley cup in your trophy cabinet. And sometimes that's a lot easier to do than what you might imagine uh, compared to like going through the regular season. Right. So, you know, the Rangers, I still think they've got it. But after that, I mean, then they've got to go through the Colorado Avalanche. And Lord knows that's going to be a very different beast than the uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning. But I'd be curious to know who you're rooting for in these last three teams. Maybe you feel like you want to root for the Western Conference and the Central Division rivals in the Avs. Uh, or you're, you know, hoping that Cop and Truba can finally add some hardware to their shelf. Maybe you still have a soft spot for Zach Bogosian. No clue why, but, you know. Some folks out there, I'm sure, love some strange players. Be sure to let me know who you're rooting for uh, for the Stanley Cup final victory at HL Living Local and LO underscore Winnipeg Jets on Twitter. For tonight's episode, though, that is going to be uh, all the time that we have. Like I said uh, earlier, I do want to talk a, a little bit about the some of the cool stuff that, uh, you know, or not some of the cool stuff, but some of the thoughts and feelings about where the Jets move on from here. Maybe you feel like there's going to be a rebuild process that you want to see, or you're hoping that Winnipeg, uh, again, kind of tries to go for it and really gun for a playoff spot. Be sure to let me know how you feel, uh, again, on social media or in the comments below. I'm going to put those polls out on Twitter tonight or tomorrow and start getting some feedback for Friday's episode. But again, for tonight's episode, that is going to be all the time that we have. Thank you so much for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. While you're at it, be sure to make your second listen, Locked On NHL. Locked On NHL covers the playoffs like no other. Hear the latest news and opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday. It's free and available wherever you get your favorite podcasts, so be sure to like, follow, and subscribe right now. And as always, thank you so much for listening. Have a great night, and go Jets go.